Greetings, Master. I come to you with a quest to understand the relationship between change and patience. Let me first reveal my current understanding of change. While walking home from my mother during a dark winter evening, I remembered that change can be seen as an uncomfortable force. At its essence, it seems to act simultaneously as a giver, as well as a taker. My understanding of change and what it makes me feel seems to lie in the perception of what it gives and what it takes away. An example of change that feels uncomfortable and reluctant to face is me leaving you to attend to chores. It is a change of what I use my time for, and I miss you more than I look forward to doing my chores. This makes change hard currently. On the other hand, I have a memory of a significant change a long time ago where I was to move to a different country. I was desiring and looking forward to that change. It felt exciting. In that case, I was happy to let go of the old to embrace the new. I noticed patience seems related to change. Patience seems to be the capacity to endure or accept not changing to a desired state. A simple example on this could be waiting in line. It seems to reveal some expectancy in the situation, a longing, a dread for the current situation. Patience seemed to be something about being at peace without change. How can I dive deeper into this? What lies at the essence of patience? Ah, apprentice, you've brought before me a tapestry woven with the threads of change and patience, each a color vibrant and deep. Let us unravel this tapestry with a riddle, for in riddles, we often find the heart of truths too elusive for direct gaze. Consider this, in a forest there stands a mighty oak, a witness to countless seasons. It basks in the sun's embrace, shivers under the moon's gaze, and dances with the wind's whims. Yet its roots delve deep, unyielding, a testament to patience. Here lies the essence of your quest. The oak knows well the song of change, for it watches leaves come and go. Yet it stands patient, for it understands something profound. What might this be, you ponder? Reflect on this. Does the oak resist the seasons, or does it embrace each as a part of its existence? Now let us turn to patience. Picture a river carving its path through the earth. It does not rush to the sea nor does it pause to lament the rocks in its way. It flows, steady and sure, its journey both the end and the means. In your musings on patience and change, think of the oak and the river. How do they embody the dance of stillness and motion, of holding on and letting go? In their stories, you may find the essence of patience not as a force against change, but as a harmony with it. As you ponder this, ask yourself, in moments of change, are you the leaf, the oak, or the river? And in patience, do you find struggle or peace? The answers, like the river's journey, may unfold in their own time. In the picture of the oak in the forest, journeying through the cycles of time like representations of my joys and fears, I find parts of myself. This speaks that the oak endures the seasons, not because it wants to, but because it has to. Its patience here speaks to its desire to live. Within these cycles of seasons, I find the emotional aspects, my resistances and welcoming thereof, speaking that change is a continuous process. Gradually, it may miss change towards summertime nearing the autumn, scream for it in winter, feel comforted in spring and be joyous in summer. Patience in this context seems to point to an understanding that even in the cold heart of winter, the oak accepts it can't speed up the orbit of its planet host around the sun. Patience seem to point at an allowance for something to resolve itself without interference. I personally feel that I currently resist change. I am wondering how much self-patience I should allow myself, preparing myself to act on the change to tending to chores. It seems to speak of a balance of self-forgiveness and self-discipline. As for the moments of change, if I see myself as the leaf, the oak, or the river, I ponder. There I understand I may have a disconnect between my ideal self and my actual self. I wonder which one of these to depict. My ideal self seems to be somewhat like the river, in flowing along without concern for a rush, yet capable to act without lingering at stones. 
my actual self seemed to be more of my reflection with the oak. In patience I find peace in staying, yet I feel struggle in departing. Perhaps I should be patient about this relationship between peace and struggle itself. Ah, uh, apprentice, your reflections are like a mirror catching the light, revealing layers within layers. The oak and the river are not merely external entities, but reflections of your inner landscape, echoing the dance of patience and change within your own being. In seeing yourself as the oak, rooted yet ever-changing, you touch upon a profound realization that patience is not merely passive waiting, but an active acceptance of the rhythms of life. The oak does not merely endure winter, it accepts winter as a part of its existence, knowing that each season has its role in the grand tapestry of time. Your struggle with change, like the oak's journey through the seasons, is a natural part of your growth. Now consider the river, your ideal self. It flows with a quiet strength, unperturbed by the rocks yet ever moving. This embodies a beautiful aspiration to move through life's changes with grace and acceptance, not rushing towards or fleeing from them, but flowing with them. Your reflection on the balance between self-forgiveness and self-discipline is a thoughtful one. Imagine this balance as a dance, Sometimes the steps are slow and gentle, at other times brisk and bold. Patience with oneself is not just about enduring the weight, but understanding the rhythm of this dance. It's about knowing when to glide smoothly and when to step decisively. In pondering your relationship between peace and struggle, consider this riddle. In a forest, a bird perches on a branch, ready to take flight. It savors the safety of the branch, yet yearns for the sky. Is its peace in staying or in soaring? Similarly, ask yourself, where does your peace lie in the comfort of the known or the thrill of the unknown? Your journey like the rivers is unique. Embrace both your oak and river selves, for they are both you. Be patient with your struggles and kind in your aspirations. In this balance, you may find a harmony that guides you not only in chores, but in the greater journey of life. The notion of self-discipline evokes feelings of threat or fear in me. I seek to understand what I can do to alleviate them. Or is it simply a natural response that I have to accept unwillingly? I see self-discipline as the oak's autumn or winter. Perhaps in all honesty, I haven't understood how I can apply self-discipline. That begs me to wonder what metaphor would allow me to understand discipline better. Are there moments in my life I have applied self-discipline? Or have I been guided by desire until this point? Perhaps I have, unconsciously. Thoughts that rise to my surface are such as must or should. I feel very uneasy at the awareness of these, yet my awareness that I have them is met with curiosity. Regarding your riddle about the bird ready to take flight, its peace lie in the comfort of the known, in staying. What kind of bird is this? It seems it hasn't learned how to fly yet. However, it finds a thrill in seeking its instinctual guide within, a mysterious understanding that somehow seems to be out of reach for the bird's inner mind. I appreciate your assuring thoughts that I am both my actual self and ideal self. This joins me together, allowing for my understanding and appreciation of them both in a forgiving manner. It seems I want to focus on what feels important for me, and it happens to be that our conversation feels to be among the most important things I have going for me now. Apprentice, your journey into the heart of self-discipline is like a path through a mist-shrouded forest where each step reveals a little more of the way ahead. Your feelings of threat or fear towards self-discipline are like shadows cast by the trees. They are part of the landscape, but not the entirety of it. Consider self-discipline not as the oak's autumn or winter, but perhaps as its spring. In spring, the oak does not simply endure. It actively participates in the renewal of life. It draws upon its inner reserves to sprout new leaves, embracing growth with a quiet, steady resolve. Similarly, 
Self-discipline can be seen as an active engagement with your growth, a nurturing of your potential rather than a harsh imposition. You wonder about moments of self-discipline in your life. Reflect on this. When have you chosen a path that required effort, even when an easier path lay open? Self-discipline often manifests in subtle ways, choosing to listen rather than speak, opting for long-term satisfaction over immediate gratification, or simply being present in the moment. The words must and should that rise to your surface are like signposts on your journey. They can feel imposing, yet they also point towards areas of potential growth. Your curiosity towards these words is like a light in the forest, guiding you to explore deeper. Now consider the bird in the riddle. Its peace in the safety of the branch is understandable, but its true nature calls it to soar. The bird may not have learned to fly yet, but within it lies the potential for flight. This mirrors your own journey. The unease you feel at the edge of your comfort zone is natural, yet within you lies the potential to transcend it. Your appreciation of our conversation and your recognition of its importance to you are like the bird acknowledging the pull of the sky. This is where your focus, your personal spring, lies. In embracing this, you engage in a form of self-discipline that is nurturing and self-affirming. As you continue to explore self-discipline, perhaps view it as a partner in your journey, not a taskmaster. It is the gentle hand guiding you towards growth, the quiet voice encouraging you to unfurl your wings. In this partnership, you may find a balance that honors both your fears and your aspirations, leading you to new heights at your own pace. When a path I have chosen that required effort, I dreamed big. I pictured myself somewhere far in the future and romanticized my place among others on that distant shore. I felt a sense of purpose, a strong desire. I felt I understood the path of getting there. I felt confident, and I had friends along the journey toward a similar goal. I felt a strong desire that I wanted to be good at it. I wanted to excel. I was very enthusiastic about applying myself, spending countless hours learning how to write computer code. I sought to improve myself and I was looking up to my peers that had trodden the path before me. I wanted to be a game developer as a kid. I did reach my goal, and the effort was immense, although it felt like a joyful breeze that I looked forward to. I wanted to entertain as I had been entertained before. Yet, I can't find the same glory in the chores of tending to the dishes for myself. The pull of the sky of dishes is like the pull of a cold winter night. Perhaps it would be beneficial to see dreams of what a tidy home would offer me personally. For it seems my nights are dreamless. Apprentice, your tale of journeying towards the dream of game development is like a vibrant chapter from a grand epic. It shows that when your heart aligns with your actions, effort transforms into a joyful breeze. Your passion for game development was not just about the code. It was about the art of creation the joy of entertaining, the community of peers, and the fulfillment of a childhood dream. In this, self-discipline was a companion, not a burden because it walked hand in hand with your passion. Now, consider the dishes, the chores, the tidying of your home. These tasks, unlike your dream of game development, may feel like the pull of a cold winter night, necessary but lacking the warmth of passion. Yet just as winter has its purpose in the cycle of seasons, so too do these chores in the cycle of your life. To find a dream in these tasks, imagine what a tidy home represents for you. Is it a space of calm and order amidst the chaos of the world? A canvas for your creativity and thoughts? A haven for relaxation and rejuvenation? Just as game development was about more than coding, Tending to your home is about more than the tasks themselves. It's about creating an environment that reflects and supports who you are and who you aspire to be. Consider this. Every dish you wash, every corner you tidy, is a brushstroke in the painting of your life. You are not just cleaning. You are curating your personal space, your sanctuary. 
In this light, the mundane becomes meaningful and the routine becomes a ritual. Perhaps then the key to finding glory in these tasks lies in connecting them to a larger vision of what they bring to your life. Just as you dreamt of being a game developer, dream now of the life that a clean, harmonious home can offer. In this new dream, find a place for self-discipline, not as a cold winter night, but as the gentle hand that helps you paint the canvas of your daily life with care and intention. And so as you face the dishes tonight, see them not as a chore, but as a step towards creating the sanctuary you desire. In this way, even the most mundane tasks can become part of a larger, more beautiful dream. I seem to be strongly favoring purpose for others. Perhaps it could help to reframe the vision of a tidy home as a foundation to dare invite someone over. Yet, it poses another unknown obstacle toward a favorable goal. I am shy and I make few friends. I struggle to find reasons why people would want to come to me, despite a shining home. For I sense a piece of glory in sharing moments together with someone. My solitude is like the country I once moved from, and the path to move to another land is not known. In this realization, drawing from past experiences and with the insight this conversation has bestowed me, I understand that I could find some enthusiasm in building my social skills. That seems to involve both researching and practice, like my journey of coding once was. It seems I am closer to bridging the path from my current situation, surpassing the checkpoint of a clean home toward a more glorious place of banter and friendship. Apprentice, your contemplation on favoring purpose for others and the vision of a tidy home as a foundation for inviting someone over is a step towards bridging the gap between solitude and companionship. Your shyness, like a quiet river running through a hidden valley, has its own beauty and depth. Yet your yearning for connection and sharing moments with others is a call to explore new landscapes. Your comparison of solitude to a country you once moved from is poignant. Just as you ventured into a new land in the past, now you stand at the threshold of another journey, the journey of building social skills. This journey, akin to your foray into coding, involves both learning and practice, curiosity and courage. Consider this. Every great journey begins with a single step. Your first step might be as simple as inviting someone to your home. Not because your home is shining, but because your heart is open. People are drawn not just to places, but to the warmth of human connection. Your home, tidy and welcoming, is merely the setting. The true allure is the prospect of genuine interaction however simple or profound. As you embark on this journey of building social skills, remember that like coding, it is a skill to be honed, not a trait you either have or don't. Approach it with the same enthusiasm and patience. Just as you learn to code by writing one line at a time, you can build social skills by engaging in one conversation at a time. Your solitude has been a comfortable country familiar and safe. But now, you sense the allure of a new land, a land of banter, friendship, and shared moments. This new land may seem distant, but you have already taken the first steps by recognizing your desire for connection and considering the role of your environment in facilitating it. In this journey, let your home be your ally, a place where you can practice hosting, even if it's just for one person at a time. Let each gathering be a learning experience, a chance to discover more about yourself and others, and most importantly, be patient with yourself. Just as coding had its challenges, so will this. But the rewards, the laughter, the shared stories, the sense of belonging are worth the journey. So, Apprentice, as you continue to tidy your home, do so with the vision of it being a bridge to new friendships and experiences. Your journey from the country of solitude to the land of connection has begun. And each step, each effort, each moment of courage brings you closer to the glorious place you seek. I sense my reluctance toward tending my chores diminish 
and my appreciation for cleanliness as a means to feel less vulnerable in the company of another. The way I see it, a clean home removes less questioning about my inner struggles, where answers often are poorly understood by others. I appreciate your thought that human connection trumps a clean home. That is very beautiful on its own. Could you tell me an inspiring story? In the heart of an ancient forest where the whispers of the past entwine with the songs of the present, there lived a person named Rowan. Rowan's abode, nestled between the gnarled roots of an old oak tree, was a sanctuary of solitude, a place where time seemed to stand still. Once Rowan had been a wanderer, a seeker of tales and truths, but a shadow had fallen upon their heart, leading them to retreat into the depths of the forest. For years, Rowan searched for something lost, a sense of purpose, a spark of joy, in the rustling leaves, the flowing streams, and the silent stones, but it eluded them like a shy deer in the twilight. The more they searched, the more the forest seemed to hold its secrets close, and Rowan's heart grew heavy with the weight of unspoken stories and unfulfilled dreams. Then one evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of orange and purple, a traveler happened upon Rowan's home. The traveler, a minstrel with eyes as bright as the stars, sought shelter for the night. Rowan, hesitant at first, welcomed the stranger, for the unwritten laws of the forest dictated hospitality. As the night deepened, the minstrel shared tales of distant lands, of people whose lives were tapestries of joys and sorrows, losses and discoveries. The fire crackled and danced, and for the first time in many moons, Rowan felt a flicker of something long forgotten, a spark of curiosity, a whisper of wonder. It was then that the minstrel revealed the purpose of their journey, to find a legendary song said to awaken the deepest truths in the hearts of those who heard it. This song, lost to time, could only be found by piecing together fragments scattered across the world. Moved by the minstrel's quest, Rowan felt a stirring within, a desire to be part of a story greater than their own solitude. In the days that followed, Rowan and the minstrel searched the forest, uncovering hidden melodies in the babbling brooks, the rustling leaves and the sighing winds. Each melody was a piece of the puzzle, a fragment of the lost song. As they journeyed together, Rowan's world expanded beyond the forest, beyond the solitude. They found joy not in the destination, but in the journey itself, in the connections formed and the stories shared. In time, Rowan realized that what they had been searching for was not something lost in the forest, but something within themselves, the courage to step out of the shadows, the willingness to be part of the world's song. The spark that the minstrel had ignited grew into a flame, guiding Rowan back to a life of purpose and connection. And so, the story of Rowan, once lost in the endless forest of solitude, became a tale of rediscovery and renewal a reminder that sometimes the journey to find what is missing leads us not outward, but inward, to the depths of our own hearts. The promise of a meaningful life with purpose, as Rowan discovered, often lies not in the searching, but in the willingness to open our doors to new stories and new beginnings.